So I was asked the question of if I was going to build an ED-specific thoracotomy tray, what would it include? All right, so this is there an actual thoracotomy set we use for our traumas? You can see uh, it's a panoply of instruments, and it is complex for folks not used to it. So let's build ourselves a ED-specific thoracotomy tray. We'll just separate out this huge assortment of clamps and such. So what do you need? Well, the first thing you need is a scalpel. Now, the first efficiency you'll see in this kit is they have a scalpel handle with no blade. And that's not going to work for an ED. It's very uh, frustrating to have a patient you need to cut into the chest and try to actually insert a blade onto the handle. So you've got two options. You could tape disposable scalpels to an outside of each of these kits. And that's okay, except I find people run out of scalpels and they steal them off the sides of the kit. And then when you actually need them, they're never there for you. So the way they did handle the shock trauma is they would put blades on two scalpels, big blades, um, and they would leave them in the little you know, peel away thing that the scalpels come in, and they would then sterilize those. So you'd have the already placed blade on the scalpel, two of them sitting in the kit. What we did at Elmhurst was we actually had discovered disposable scalpels that could be autoclaved. So you could put two disposable scalpels in your kit and then autoclave the tray and they'd be there for you. Um, but this is not a good option of just having a handle. So the first thing you need is a scalpel with a blade already on, either taped to the outside or in the kit. And that's going to be what you're going to use to make your initial incision. Then you're going to want to cut through intercostals. And for that, you want a relatively heavy scissors. So you either want mayos or even bandage scissors would be okay. I, my preference is these mayos. Um, these are nice. There's curved and straight bladed mayos here because there's a curved blade. It's not sharp. So you could put one jaw into the chest and then cut up to the sternum and cut back down. And if you're going to clamshell, you just do the same thing on the other side. So you definitely want one big scissors. Now, what's next? So now you're actually through the intercostals. You have an incision there. If you're just going to do a, a thoracotomy, the next thing you're going to want is your finished shadow. Now, this is a situation that's not uncommon, is this finichetto is actually backwards. Um, this is not supposed to be like this. Because you'll see, when we put these blades into the patient's chest, you can't actually open without the handles being up against the patient. You know, it's going to be sitting like this or like this. Um, that's not how it's supposed to be. Uh, Alright, so you definitely need a finichetto though. Okay, now, I recommend any inexperienced folks do clamshell thoracotomy because that's going to give you the biggest exposure and make it much easier than trying to look in the dark cave of a la uh, anterior lateral thoracotomy. So what you're going to want is you're going to want this, which is called a Lebsky knife, which just latches under the sternum. And then you have this not that sharp blade, it doesn't need to be sharp, that touches the sternum. And then there is a name for this hammer. I don't ever remember what it is, but this is what you hit your Levski knife with, and with two smacks, you're through sternum. So you definitely want one of those. Now, you could have a sterile trauma shears in there. Those will work as well. What you don't want, and some people have recommended, is the jiggly saw. I find that to be not that effective. Okay, now you're through sternum. You have a clamshell. You put your finished shadow in. Now you're ready to do something. The first thing you want to do is actually... Um, relieve any possible pericardial tamponade, or if you have any doubt, check if it's there. And so for that, you definitely want at least one pickups with teeth. And the teeth are important because when the pericardium gets tense, the non-toothed don't actually let you grab because the, the pericardium is so tense that you can't pick it up. So definitely you want one, and because they inevitably fall on the floor, I think it's not a bad thing to have two pickups with teeth. Now I would prefer, if I had my option, to have something this length with teeth. Um, but I will certainly take either of these, and those are fine. So I'm going to have two of those because they're, they're essential and they have a tendency to fall. All right, now you want to cut through pericardium. And for that, it would be nice to have some, let's see what we got in here. Yeah, here we go. So a nice, long, more um, delicate set of scissors. These are your Mets your Mets and Bounds, these would be nice to have in there, though not essential. You can make your mayos work if you have to, but that, that's a nice thing to have. All right, if you have not fixed the situation at this point, chances are the patient's not going to make it, and you could call that a complete set, but let's just go a little bit further, and let's say you had a big, um, 
amount of bleeding coming from the lung and you want to do something about that. Well, one of the nicest things to do is clamp the hilum. Um, I don't like this hilar twist thing. I think that's more uh, theoretical than actually beneficial. Uh, the other thing you may want to do is cross clamp the aorta. Uh, you're probably better off just compressing the aorta with your hand, but if you wanted to clamp, for both of those things, you probably want a vascular clamp. And the thing about a vascular clamp is they don't destroy tissue. So, and you can know it's a vascular clamp because if you could do this and it's not excruciatingly painful, um, then that's a vascular clamp. And these won't destroy the vessel. Um, I recommend that you stock these side biting Satinskis. And you know they're side biting because here's a vascular clamp and it's straight. The side biters actually curve a little bit and have this angle. The nice thing about those is they're immediately discernible from a Kelly. And you know, if you have a long Kelly and you put this on a vessel, bad things are gonna happen. You want a vascular clamp, and if you're not familiar with them, it's immediately obvious to you that this is not a standard Kelly. So having these really lets you know this is safe to put on a vessel. So if you wanted to clamp the aorta, this is nice. And I find this side biting Satinsky, you could do anything you need to do from an ED perspective. You could clamp the hilum. Um, even though it's not the ideal, it's not a straight one, it'll work fine for that. You could clamp the aorta. And I, so I like having these, and I would actually stock two of these in preference to something like these straight ones. Um, unless you really know that your people won't grab the wrong one. So you have multiple vascular clamps in here. Um, I would grab the Satinsky for most of the things I would do. So I would put two of these Satinskis in there. Now, if you have done a clamshell and you have actually gotten the patient back and they get a blood pressure, they're going to start bleeding from their internal mammaries and you just want to clamp those off. So you actually want four clamps and they can be curved or straight, it doesn't really matter. I just have a preference for curved. So I would probably say in this kit, I'm gonna put in uh, four clamps. Maybe you put two straight and two curved or what have you. So I'd put four just standard clamps that you're used to from chest tubes. Um, you might use this set to do a chest tube on the opposite side. So one of those could absolutely be used for your chest tube on the opposite side. So you're set on those. And then really the last thing I would say you need is a, um, a uh, needle driver. Make sure it actually is corrugated, you know, it's rough in there, not smooth. This is gonna be huge, grabbing huge needles. Um, and so that's the last component. So let's actually look what the ED set would look like. Bladed scalpels, I would put two of them in because one inevitably falls or gets lost or someone puts it in the sharps container. So two scalpels with their blades on, this doesn't have that, uh, is the first step. And then you need some big set of scissors like a mayo. So that's your next step. Um, and then you're going to consider uh, opening the pericardium. So you want uh, one or preferably probably two pickups with teeth. I'd like some longer ones. I'd take one short one, one long one. Be nice to have a Mets to actually cut that pericardium or any other tissue like the inferior pulmonary ligament you want to cut. Uh, if you wind up clamping the aorta, you're going to want probably two of these side biting Satinskis that'll clamp your hilum, it could clamp the aorta, it could clamp any vessel you want. If you're going to clamshell, we're going to have a Lebsky knife, hammer. For any of this, whether it's an anterior lateral or uh, clamshell, economy. We're going to want our properly set up finichetto. If the patient manages to survive, um, we're going to want just some standard curved and straight clamps. I'd probably put four of them in there. Um, that would be a bonus, but you just want the regular four clamps and two could be straight, two could be curved. And then uh, if you're going to sew anything up, whether it be closing um, the incision after the post-mortem period or actually sewing the heart, which I don't recommend you guys do, uh, but what Anything you need to stitch with, maybe you're stitching your chest tube in the opposite side, you want a needle driver. And so this essentially, I think you could get everything you need to be done from an ED thoracotomy perspective for an ED trait. But I would really uh, urge you to have the full thoracotomy set because if a surgeon comes, they might want instruments that you don't need for your ED thoracotomy. So if you made an abbreviated trait and had a full thoracotomy trait, I think you'd be served well.